Are you tired of listening to that absolute fire that you cooked up last night, only to find out that it's trash, adding a complete new meaning to the phrase pissing on your bonfire? Have you bought another expensive VST plugin, expecting it to be the missing piece of the puzzle, the hidden weapon, the secret ingredient to better productions? And then you found that actually nothing's changed apart from you're in your overdraft now and then the next thing you know you're being chased for all the money you owe like this. Have you ever listened to the same 10 second loop for so long that when you press stop the music continues playing as if it's burnt into your brain and you lay awake all night then suffer hallucinations from sleep deprivation the next day? Well then you should seek professional help instead of subscribing to a mediocre YouTube channel with a highly unimaginative and entirely misleading name. Once you've done that and your life's back in order, feel free to come and watch my new video series. It's called Why You Suck At Music Production. I often see people on forums and groups asking questions about gain staging. They get a ton of conflicting answers and a lot of the answers come from people that suck at music production but perhaps don't know it yet. If you see that happening in future, don't let them know they suck. The last thing we need is more arguments on social media. But please do everyone a favour and point them towards this series, so I can tell them instead. So what actually is gain staging? Well to start with, Gain is just another word for level or volume. People might tell you otherwise, but honestly, they're just overcomplicating things and probably suck at music production. A gain stage is just a point in the audio signal where the level, volume, or gain can be adjusted, like here, here, or here. So gain staging simply means controlling the volume levels within your project at each stage to avoid certain problems. I'm going to show you four of these problems, or four mistakes that you might be making because you suck and then I'm going to show you how to properly use gain staging to avoid these mistakes. Mistake number one, clouded judgment. Because of a number of reasons like the Fletcher Munson curves, masking and stereo image, louder always sounds better. This can be a problem especially when adding effects like EQ, where the cuts and boosts affect the overall gain of the sound. To stop the louder equals better principle from clouding your judgement like a fine wine, make sure your audio is at the same level before and after each plugin or effect. Do this by adjusting the output gain control on each effect where necessary. Or if like me you've spent way too much money on trying to suck less, then some of your plugins might even have an automatic feature that does this for you like the FabFilter Pro Q3. If the plugin you're using doesn't have an output gain control at all, then use another plugin for that purpose. I'd suggest using plugins that are made primarily for the task of adjusting gain like this utility plugin in Ableton Live to avoid unwanted coloration and to save that precious CPU power. By keeping your levels consistent before and after each effect, you can more accurately A-B reference the sound, with and without the effect enabled, to decide if you're actually improving the mix or not. Mistake number two, clipping. I told you it's not ready yet. Honey, just show it to them. <laughs> Flynn doesn't realise that having all his faders turned up to maximum is a one-way ticket to unwanted distortion called clipping, and that's why Flynn sucks at music production. Clipping occurs when the volume on the master channel goes above 0 dBFS, and the solution? Just turn your damn faders down Flynn, you're better than this. Mistake number three, plugin behaviour. Some effects will behave differently depending on the input level of the audio. Compressor plugins, for example, if you leave the threshold setting in the same place but increase the volume before the effect, then the compressor will apply more gain reduction. 
Most distortion plugins will add more harmonics to the sound at higher input levels. And often analog style plugins will add more saturation or coloration as the input level is increased. In fact, a lot of analog modeled plugins have a preferred input volume level for the effect behave as intended. Normally this will be stated in the plugins manual. The point that I'm getting at is that if you adjust the gain at an earlier point in the signal, you might be changing how an effect that's placed later on in the signal chain behaves. So whenever you adjust any plugin settings, you should check to see whether those changes have affected the overall gain of the sound. If they have, then you should make adjustments to keep your levels consistent, just like we discussed in mistake number one. It's probably unrealistic to think that anyone will do this 100% of the time though. Music production is a fluid process and often focusing too much on things like gain staging can stifle creativity and hinder progress. So learn what plugin settings will change your overall gain and also learn which of your plugins behave differently with different input volumes. If you have an idea that you want to get done quickly and you somehow alter the game before a transparent EQ plugin, a delay and a reverb, it's probably not worth worrying too much about gain staging. Whereas altering the game before distortion and compression, for example, might result in changing the timbre of the sound and messing up some settings that earlier on you spent quite a lot of time to get right. Mistake number four, signal to noise ratio. Back in the dark ages before digital audio, the definition of gain staging was adjusting the levels of an audio signal at each stage of amplification to achieve the best signal to noise ratio whilst also avoiding unwanted audible distortion. This is still relevant now if you're recording audio from the real world or if you're using other analog gear such as analog mixing desks and effects. All analog equipment is made up of smaller electronic devices and all electronic devices produce noise. The total amount of noise that a piece of equipment adds to the audio signal is called the noise floor. There's also an upper limit on how high the signal level can be driven before the audio becomes distorted. The difference in volume between the noise floor and the audio that we want is called the signal to noise ratio. We always want to aim for a high signal to noise ratio for a clearer sound with less noise. In recording this means we should set our input gain so that our audio signal is as loud as possible but not so loud as to cause distortion, unless we want distortion, of course. If our audio is too quiet from the outset then we'll have to turn it up later in the signal chain, probably in our door. At this point we'll also be increasing the volume of the unwanted noise. To summarise, for good gain staging, try to keep your levels the same before and after each plugin. Leave enough headroom on each track to avoid clipping the master channel. Remember that some plugins behave differently depending on the audio input volume. And when recording or using analog gear, always aim for the highest signal to noise ratio possible. If you can do these four things, then you might just suck a little bit less at music production. After this video, you'll probably still suck at music production. Any changes or improvements are likely to be subtle, insignificant, or completely non-existent. And subscribing to Electronic Music School may or may not result in future improvements or wasted time. You suck!